And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. Mr. President, thank you for giving me the floor. I must uh, congratulate both Ambassadors uh, Mitch Pfeiffer and Igrizela Lopez on their reappointment. Mr. President, at the outset, my delegation would like to reiterate that the revitalization of the General Assembly is a political process, and its principal objective should be to strengthen the role of the General Assembly as the main deliberative, policy-making, and representative organ of the United Nations. In addition, my delegation believes that the attempts to undermine the role played by the General Assembly through perceived encroachment must be countered and discouraged at all costs. While reaffirming the resolution 73-341 of September of 2019 and 74-303 of the 4th of September 2020, and all of the previous resolutions adopted by consensus related to the revitalization of the work of the Assembly, my delegation would like to recall this Assembly of the role and authority of the General Assembly and the strict respect of the charter-based prerogatives and the division of work amongst the principal organs of the United Nations. There has been a sustained effort, I must say, to make the work of the Assembly more focused and relevant undoubtedly. This was identified as a priority during the 58th session, and efforts continued at subsequent sessions to streamline the agenda, improve the practice, and the working methods of the main committees, enhance the role of the general committee, strengthen the role and authority of the president, and examine the assembly's role in the process of selecting the secretary general. Mr. President, we might also recall that during the 70th and the 71st sessions, the Assembly adopted landmark resolutions on the revitalization of the work of the General Assembly, which, amongst other things, established an oath of office and a code of ethics for the presidents of the General Assembly and provided for informal interactive dialogue with candidates for the position of president of the General Assembly. The practice of convening high-level thematic debates, we will recall, is also a direct outcome of the revitalization progress process, which is commendable. It has become an established practice for the Secretary General to brief member states periodically, which we see in informal meetings of the General Assembly on his recent activities and travels. These briefings have provided a well-received opportunity for exchange between the SG and the member states. Mr. President, let me now turn to the circumstances of developing countries and smaller states. It has become difficult to attend all the high-level and side events organized in parallel with the general debate. As such, we suggest that the side events organized in parallel with the general debate of the Assembly should be kept to a minimal. We note that with, that with the commencement of the in-person meetings in the post-COVID period, it has created a situation where the resources of the smaller delegations are exploited beyond its capacity to focus on side events, which results in an impediment in giving priority to the main meetings of the General Assembly. We remain hopeful that this aspect would be addressed as a matter of priority in the future. Another aspect that I, I, I thought we should focus on is the opportunity to, for multiple statements to be made prior to the adoption of voting on a resolution. Mr. President, you will recall that member states are entitled to make a general statement on the resolution discussed, followed by an explanation of vote before the vote, and an explanation of vote after the vote, and finally the two rights of reply. And if we are lucky enough not to have points of order being raised from time to time. With all respect to our member states, it will appear that this right has been over-exploited, resulting in a failure to economize on time, which compels the extension of the time frames allocated to the several committees and consequent costs of and the unavailability of support services such as interpreters and connected backup staff. We would also like to see 
greater consultation between the Secretariat and the member states in the structuring of the program of work, particularly those of an informal nature, which closely follows the procedures, the procedures of a formal meeting. It is important, Mr. President, that member states do not feel left out of the planning process and the selection of resource persons. It is also important that the selection of resource persons adequately reflect a balanced geographical distribution of such persons wherever possible, unless there is an intelligible rationale for doing otherwise. Arbitrariness, Mr. President, in this process must be discouraged as it, as it can be anathema I say to procedural propriety and the rule of law. Mr. President, in the long term, my delegation would wish to encourage you, Mr. President, to optimize the informal dialogue format by minimizing duplication of questions and ensuring more time for responses. In certain instances, we observe that the main focus of the assembly diverted due to the same issues being raised repeatedly by the same delegations in different forms. This, Mr. President, leads to a situation where the time allocated to more substantive issues being limited. As such, a doubt has been raised in the minds of many whether the outcome envisioned by the theme of the 73rd session, making the United Nations relevant to all people, global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable and sustainable so societies is fully realized. Mr. President, in conclusion, Sri Lanka wishes to commend all the past Secretary Generals and the Presidents of the General Assembly for their unstinted commitment towards the revitalization of this Assembly. We remain hopeful and have reason to believe that the working methods of the General Assembly could be made more meaningful under your leadership in the times to come with the efforts in re revitalizing its work. We are pleased with your style and manner in interacting with the member states at many levels and through the creation of the General Committee in a frank and transparent manner. The sharing of your ideas with the membership. What greater democracy can we have than through consultation and the ability to draw on some consultation? At the same time, we highlight the need to maintain transparency, democracy and inclusivity of all member states in this endeavor, which will be vital in realizing the targets envisioned under the 2030 agenda. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished ambassador of Sri Lanka.